Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Lovely to have you here. Today we're gonna to be talking about how I shot this wine photo, product photo, still life. Probably a product photo, I guess you'd describe it as. Using a wine bottle and also some glasses with some wine in them. Uh, lots of reflective subjects, lots of white around to reflect into those. So there were a few things that were a little bit tricky when we took the photos and a little bit tricky when we went to edit them as well. And we'll be covering both sides of those things in this video today. The setup we used for this photo here was a three light setup. So we had a key light, which was a large circular light source, a four foot octagon softbox that I'd used a circular mask for. We also used a strip box as well, a 150 centimeter strip box, which would be what about four or five foot, two, five foot as well. Uh, and we also used a background light. Um, I was using my Godox 8600 strobes for the key and the fill. And then I was using a, uh, one of the flashes. I can't even remember the model of the flash, the circular one with a, a snoot on it in order to get that nice background uh, strip along the, the background of our, our setup here. So I'll just quickly show you, this is the image that we started with, and this is the image that we ended up with. And you can see there's quite a big difference between where we started and where we finished. Uh, with this sort of shot here with lots of reflections, uh, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get everything in the one photo. So it meant that we needed to split up the things that we were photographing and then composite them all together once we get into Photoshop. This photo ended up being four photos in total. There was a base shot of the tables and also the bottom of the glasses, a shot for the wine part of the glasses, a shot of the bottle, and also a shot of the label too. And all then put together is what we ended up with. Before I even started taking this photo, I always start with a sketch when I'm doing these sorts of things. I find it's a good idea just to put some pen on paper uh, sketch out what the basic composition you want um, or, or sketch out a few different compositional layouts just before you get to actually arranging things and that means when you actually go to start putting things into the frame you have a little bit of an idea of where things are going. Now I'm by no means a good sketcher uh, you can see here that I'm absolutely rubbish at drawing but it still gives me a basic idea of what I'm doing and it also lets me start to think about where I'm wanting to put the lights, you know, what sort of specular highlights I'm wanting to get on my objects, uh, whether what, what, what I'm wanting the background light to do. And, and when, when I come to start putting the lights in the frame, again, I have a bit of intent behind where I'm putting things. And I'm not just sort of placing something here and, and hoping for the best, you know. I know it's gonna give me the sort of look that I'm wanting to get. A good idea once you've done that is just to start putting things into the frame and see how they actually fit. Uh, I was using a 90mm macro lens, the Sony 90mm macro lens, so uh, relatively compressed perspective here. And just arranging all those basic elements just to see how they all fit, how the balance feels with each other. Uh, it's a good idea at this point too, just to make sure that everything's clean, because particularly when you're dealing with glass, super easy to leave fingerprints behind, uh, you know, a white table gets dust and dirt all over it. Uh, you can always fix that stuff in post-production, but if you're getting rid of it before you take the photo, then it just makes your life uh, a hell of a lot easier. So try and make everything as clean as possible, and then when you get to the editing, you won't be tearing your hair out and end up looking like me. After I had the basic composition, then it's time to add in the lights. And what I do is just add them in and again, have a quick play with them moving around, having a look at how the lights are falling on the subject and the objects and have a look at how those specular highlights are, are being rendered in the photo. Because uh, we know when we have these really reflective objects like glass, uh, the glass bottle and the glasses that the wine's in, wine glasses, I guess you'd call them. I keep, <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. Uh, but you know they're you're gonna have some sort of specular highlight and they're gonna become a feature in the photo. You wanna make sure they look really good. Uh, so playing around with these, making sure everything looks all right. And then once you're happy with the general look, it's time to actually work out how bright these lights should be. So the best way to measure the brightness of the lights is to use a light meter. Uh, if you don't have a light meter, it's not the, not the end of the world. You know, you can definitely just eyeball this stuff and fiddle around with it until it looks right the light meter just gets you there a little bit faster. 
So I measured the the key light. Uh, I knew that I wanted the, the aperture to be around f16, which would mean that I would get both the bottle and the wine glasses in focus in one shot. Uh, I could have focus stacked, but you know, f16 just makes it a little bit easier, less to composite. Uh, also, f16 was giving me a nice look to the background as well, where it was slightly blurry, but we were still getting some nice texture from the, the MDF walls in my studio. So I measured the light, got the key light to f16. Uh, initially started with the fill light to f16 as well, but that was giving me a bit too bright of a highlight, and I ended up dropping that down about one and two thirds of a stop. Uh, so that would have been measuring around about f9, I think, from memory. Uh, but I sort of just did that to taste. The background light, I must admit I didn't meter at all, I just did that to taste. You know, we've got digital photography, so uh, once I had taken the sort of the first shot and got the key and the, the fill light sorted, I just turned the background light on, played with the positioning, and then uh, ended up ending up, I think, about half brightness or whatever the model of my flash is. Next thing I needed to do was add the wine into the glasses. Uh, I was using a ancient bottle of red wine that was sitting on top of my cupboard. Um, this thing has been sitting in the cupboard of my partner's apartment for as long as we've been dating, which is coming up to two years. Uh, so this was pretty rancid stuff. You wouldn't want to drink it. And it was, it was black as night as well. Um, good to get rid of it by using it for food photography, uh, product photography, but it, it was super, super dark. So what I ended up doing was just adding a bit of water to it as well to make it a little bit more transparent. Uh, I wanted the wine to be dark so that it sort of matched the, the blackness of the bottle, but I didn't want it to be black. It still wanted to, to come across as red wine. A problem I had once I added the wine into the glasses was that there was just lots of bubbles in it. Uh, this may have been because I added water in it as well. I don't know if that's, uh, I, I don't know the chemistry behind that. Um, but there were just bubbles everywhere. And one solution I have to get rid of those bubbles is just to soak them up with a bit of paper towel. So I got a bit of paper towel. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't paper towel, it was toilet paper. That's all I had on me. Uh, but I used some toilet paper and just dabbed it against those bubbles and that got rid of them all nice and quickly. Uh, gave the glasses a bit of a final clean, some smudges I saw, and then I was pretty much ready to go to take, start taking those photos. So the best thing to do when you're taking these sorts of photos where you know you're gonna have to do a bit of compositing down the track is just to first start with a baseline shot. Uh, this will have all the elements in the frame, so it'll be, it'll be the sort of setup that you're expecting when you're actually gonna finish the photo. And it just lets you know what things are wrong with the photo, so which things you'll need to photograph separately in order to fix them before you actually put them all together. Immediately, the obvious things to notice that are gonna be wrong with this initial photo are there's lots of reflections in the wine glasses and there's lots of reflections in the bottle as well. Uh, the only way to block out those reflections are to use some flags, so uh, using some black cardboard to block out everything that's reflective in the environment. And to add those into the scene, it means we're gonna to have to start photographing elements and then composite them all later. I also know I'll want a photo for the label too, uh, because it's likely once we add the flags in that they're actually gonna suck up a bit of the light that's reflecting off and the label will go too dark. Another thing I noticed at this point as well is that the fall off in the background from uh, at the top right hand corner it isn't, isn't as severe as the bottom left-hand corner. I wanted that top right-hand corner to fall off to really dark, just like the bottom left. The reason this wasn't happening was just because I was getting a lot of light spilling out from my key light, and I couldn't really control that anyway with the, the space that I was working in. However, I knew this was gonna be an easy fix in Photoshop, so I, I didn't worry about that too much for now. Uh, once we get to the editing stage, we can fix that nice and quickly, just with an exposure layer. Okay, so we know we're gonna take four photos. Let's start with the base shot. Base shot is gonna have as much in it as possible, um, but all the elements that we don't need to composite in. Uh, so everything except for the wine glass bulbs and also the bottle. Uh, even though we're compositing in the wine glass bulbs, we still need the stems and we're going to include them in the base shot. So the base shot basically includes the wine glasses, the cutting board, and also the background table. 
This is a nice easy shot to do. We don't need to worry about reflections in this photo. Uh, we've already measured the light, so it's basically just a matter of taking the photo. And then we're ready to move on to the next one. Second one to tackle is the reflections in the wine glass. Uh, now what we need to do is just flag everything that's being reflective in my studio. And I'm in a studio just with completely white walls, so pretty much light just bouncing off in every direction. Uh, what we're going to do is just add some cardboard to the table to cut out the reflections from the white table. Uh, I also add a little bit of um, a flag I have on my strip box there between the two glasses because there was even reflections coming from between those two glasses as well. And then there was also some light coming off the wall to the right of me too. So I just have a bunch of black, I think sort of a two card, uh, black card in my studio. And the black card's nice because you just fold it, it sits up on the table nice and easily. And that will block out the light coming from the right hand side. You can see from the end result here that it's done a really good job of blocking out all those reflections. So we have this nice clean photo where we're really seeing the, the richness of the color of that wine in the glasses, just like we want to. Next thing is to do pretty much the same thing with the bottle. Uh, so for this shot, we want to actually take the wine glasses out. In that first photo, we were getting uh, the, the shape of the wine glasses reflecting in the really nice highlight on the left hand side of the wine bottle. Uh, so we remove them and we just put the bottle in by itself and then again just lay black card over everything and uh, put up a, a black card to stop the light from reflecting from that white wall. Another thing I did for the wine bottle too was I turned off the background light because there was a very slight specular highlight on the top left hand side of the wine bottle coming from that background light that was ruining the, the silhouette of it. So I turned off that light so that that wasn't causing any specular highlights on our bottle and then we were pretty much good to take the shot and the end result looks really nice. You'll notice that there's still a bit of a reflection from the cutting board in the wine bottle in this final photo, but that's okay, I'm not worried about that. It looks natural to me and it helps embed that wine bottle in the scene. We don't want it to look like we've just sort of completely taken the photo from somewhere else and whacked it on and get, end up with a really unnatural looking final product. All right, now that that's done, one more photo we need to take, which is for the label. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to have a bit of white card to fill in some light when you're photographing the labels just to make them pop a little bit more. Because I was photographing in the white studio, I found that when I took all, all the flags away, I was getting enough light reflecting from the white wall to the right of me to fill in some light on that label, it looked really nice. It's still got a nice gradient from the left to the right hand side where we're getting this nice sort of fall off uh, and transition of darkness across, across the label but it's not completely dark like it was, or very dark like it was when we were using the flags. Uh, it, I think it's a nice middle ground and it still looks nice and natural. Okay, so there are our four photos, there are four final photos. Uh, and this is only the first half of what we need to do. Now we need to go into Photoshop and put them all together, do a couple of other adjustments too, before we get to our final result. Now, it was my original intention to show you step by step how I edited this photo together. I started recording the video, it went on forever. The video would be like an hour long if I recorded and showed you everything in, in the time frame that it took me to do it. So just for brevity's sake, I decided to go down another route and I'm just gonna show you the different steps to the final product. So we'll go through them layer by layer so you can see how all these elements sort of build on top of each other to get to the end result. Basically what we're wanting to work out is how I get from this, which is our starting setup shot that we use just to, to work out what we're actually going, uh, what we're actually doing, uh, to this, which is our final photo. And we've got all these different layers in there uh, to get to that final result. So let's hide all these and just go through them step by step. So we'll start with the base shot, which we're gonna put everything else on top of. And you'll notice the difference between this shot and that shot is that I've cropped in a little bit and I've also done a rotate as well because this one was looking a little bit wonky. Uh, I've also changed the cutting board around too, which looks a lot nicer and we'll do a couple of adjustments to this in a little bit as well. So a couple of things I wanted to fix on this baseline shot. I wanted this fall off on the top right hand side to be the same as the fall off in the bottom left. So I've just added a gradient there with an exposure layer. 
Uh, I also wanted the table to be coming out of the corner here, more like it was in the initial shot. So I've just moved that edge of the table across so that it looks like the table's starting there, which looks a lot nicer. And the last thing as well, if I zoom in a little bit here, now you might notice that there's a bit of a, a, a color cast to the table down here. So a bit of an orange cast, likely coming from the cutting board or maybe even some light coming through the wine glasses here as well. So I added a hue saturation layer where I took the saturation all the way down to nothing. Um, just so that that table came across as gray, there's also a bit of color coming through the stems of these glass too, and I wanted them to just be transparent gray. However, I still left a little bit of color in this reflection down here. So that looks natural because if that was gray, then it would start to look a little bit weird. So using it in the right amount. From that there, we started to layer things on top of this initial image. And probably the best place to start is with the bottle. So I added just the bottle in from the shot with the uh, flags that we used to block out the light and block out all those reflections. That went on the top. And then I just whacked the label from um, just our standard bottle shot on top of that because that label looked a lot nicer without the really deep. I like the gradient here, but the shadow was a little bit too deep on that initial shot with the flags. Uh, so that was the bottle done, nice and easy. Next was to add in the glasses. And we've got one for the right glass and one for the left glass. So the reason I did them separately was that I moved the glasses very slightly between these shots when I was putting all the flags on. Um, so I needed to split them up to get some nice even composites, but it wasn't too difficult and worked out pretty well. All right, the other thing I wanted to change was I didn't like how tall this cutting board was. The cutting board when I took the photo was going off the back of the table and it's looking a little bit weird, like the, the perspective or something doesn't look right down here. So what I wanted to do was squish this cutting board so that it was a bit less prominent in the frame. Um, and I did that just like that through that change there. So that was using a transform tool. I used both the skew and also the scale, just changing the vertical scale without adjusting the horizontal scale in order to sort of squish that cutting board down a bit. And once I'd done that, just cloned out the rest of the stuff behind it. Also got rid of that line on the wall there so that the cutting board looks like it was always there. It was always photographed from that angle. Let's just look before and after. Quite a big difference, I think. Um, also adjusted some of the brightness on there. Now, this step here, uh, you'll notice if I get rid of that mask there, see how there's a shadow coming from the wine bottle. Uh, without that shadow, it's looking very much like this is just sort of copied and paste on top, which isn't super nice. So I wanted to add that shadow back in. Uh, the way I did this was basically uh, to take the cutting board from this photo and mask it on top of this here. So let me just see that. In hindsight, I don't know why I did that. Uh, it made things overly complicated. And really the thing that I sort of realized since doing it is that the cutting board has some lines in it and there are some slight differences. These are slightly converging now because I, I skewed uh, the underlying cut board, but it didn't skew this top layer. It's the sort of thing that I, I like, I, I don't think anyone would notice unless it was pointed out to them, but I don't know why I didn't just use uh, an exposure layer and, um, and create a shadow just from scratch there. It would have been so much simpler. But anyway, you live and you learn and it looks pretty fine at the end, really. I'm not, not too upset about it all. 
Um, just dropped the brightness of that cutting board down as well. So it was a little bit darker fitting with the other tones in our elements in the scene. And then I also dropped the saturation from that too, because I felt like it was, when it was this, uh, this colorful, it was taking away from these things here, which is really what we want to be looking at. So just drop that down to about 30% or so. Um, just so that it wasn't quite as, as eye-catching in the scene. After doing all that, it was really just doing some basic overall adjustments to the image. So doing the general cloning, removing things like the couple of reflections left here, uh, the bubbles in the wine there, a couple of reflections um, in this bottle here too. Um, Pretty straightforward stuff, nothing too crazy there. Also just added a little bit more contrast in, which I think really makes a difference, makes that light feel like it's beaming down onto these bottles, really, really like that. Uh, made the top a little bit darker up here as well because it still wasn't quite as dark as it was down the bottom. And then I just added a color balance in. So another thing I noticed if I grab my color checker here tool, Got this little bit of a green cast coming through on the back wall here. So I did a color balance layer and just added in a smidge of magenta to get rid of that. And then a bit of blue just to make it feel a bit more sort of steely. Um, and I think that helps bring out the, the redness of the wine and these nice sort of beige golden tones in the label here. And that's that. That's the finished photo. So again, from where we started, to where we ended up. And nothing was too crazy complicated in all of that, it just took a lot of time. So um, hopefully that's enough to sort of show you what the process was to get there. Uh, and if you're taking a shot like this, then you know the sort of things to look out for when you're editing your own photos. And that's everything done. Thanks for joining me on the journey. If you've made it this far, then give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, it's been a pretty long video, so I'm proud of you for sticking it out. We'll leave it there and we'll jump onto the next topic, whatever that is, next time I make a video. Hope to see you then. Enjoy the rest of your day for now.